thanks for uh, joining us again, Tex. Appreciate you joining us. Good seeing you in the uh, special class bots uh, video in the uh, warrior class uh, bot video. And we're hoping to do some more of these, you know, and uh, carry this on throughout, doing some different classes and carrying it on, even in, like I said, to combats and even cores maybe. And we, you know, we can go anywhere in this basically, and hopefully give some guys some information on, uh, you know, the best things to invest in the game and. Maybe not the best things to invest in and stay away from. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I, I think it's a it's a good uh, mix that of of opinions, views, and and uses that yeah. we we give because there's just not one single way to use all bots, and True. that's what people need to need to understand. True. And so let's hit it off. It's quite a small class, the Gunner class, but uh, I think it's a class that's come back into the meta recently. It really fell away with uh, Air Class bots. I think Space Ape have really made a bit of a push to make Gunners more relevant, as we saw in the tech tree uh, with the uh, Gunner improvement. And uh, the first bot we've got, one of the originals, was uh, is Prowl. So uh, where do you rate Prowl? How would you, do you use him? Have you got him? Oh. Um, I, I don't. I don't have him as a five star because obviously uh, i'll be honest like you know not using a lot of gunners myself except for one currently which is you know everyone knows about <laughs> but <Yeah>. it's um <laughs> it's it's funny because you know between prowl and Al alpha bravo they were kind of your original gunners yeah. right they were your one shot gunners yeah. back then um super useful i think as as you mentioned uh when combats especially flak top shot and trench foot come into the game we saw a massive decline in the, in the gunners because why can't i just use a jet who can one shot but now has massive more dps and it's not running into trouble yeah so it kind of made that gunner class obsolete because it took their job and did a better job so it kind of really forced sa to be like hey if we want to make gunners a thing we kind of got to really boost them up and, and I think we started to see the G1 cores, you know, obviously, but like Jazz, look, J you know, Prowl, Prowl, Jazz, and, and Bravo were your, were your three. So starting with Prowl, it's, uh, I don't know, super powerful now if you have the five star plus his G1 in a G metal. Like when we were testing some, some pretty big numbers, like, you know, we got up to near 11,000 damage. And I was like, oh, what's going on there? And it's like, you kind of need those numbers to make people be like, hey, gunners are useful. Look how much damage they're doing. Um, but they were just too thin on the health, I think, and very – just too lightweight. I just I, – I can't do with lightweight kind of bots. Well, I actually pulled 5 Star Pro quite a while ago and slowly invested in him. And then it was around just before the time combats came out. Started leveling him up to put in my team. And I just found him quite expensive. You know, is it six plus two? Is it five plus three? Is it something like that? You'll correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just found it quite expensive. And um, as soon as combats went came out, I just dropped him. And I know he does a lot of damage, but I just find that the range that they have is not enough. By the time they get in range, it's kind of too late. You're already in danger because you got to think that if your gunner needs to get in that range, your tanks are already massively in range of those defenses. And your healers yeah. are probably within range of target protocol and mortars and things like that, which you, you were using sort of gunners for because jets couldn't really take them out with the armor and things like that. They struggled against them. And so Prowl for me just really, really fell away. And it's never really got back. I know some people use them, but no. So me personally, it's... I'd put them in situational. Would you go higher? or I've, I've I, even got I would... a G1 core G metal as well. And, yeah. you know, even then I'm like... I wouldn't. I wouldn't go higher than the halfway mark of good and situational. Like yeah. that's that's where it kind of caps out. Um, the other factor is too. Like when you use their ability, they're not fully locked on to a target. So you could yeah, miss true. with one what, one or two missiles, and then be like, "Hey, that's still standing," but I should have easily killed it. It's like, yeah, but. There's only four missiles or whatever, so but one missed. So a quarter of your damage didn't yeah. even hit. But then and on the like... flip side, though, you can use it to clear out two defenses rather than one. If there's two with a sliver of health, True. you can put it in between. So it's, it's got its pluses, it's got its minuses. Uh, but the range remains um, a deal breaker. Well... And so next up is Cliff Jumper. So we talked in a previous video about this, um, mm. about 
how glass gas and you know things like that and inferno weren't very apparent in the game and maybe not as much as it could be or should be even so yeah where would you rate cliff jumper is he useful um as a standalone kind of bot like no definitely not he he needs a combo yeah. right so he needs that he needs that follow-up bot now it's like what do we have in a game that can follow up a bot like cliff jumper and make him put on your team and you're looking at the terms of like a bumblebee you're looking at a rust dust right you're looking at these little you know little team of small bots that you put that combo together that's devastating right like you know but how many of those people are gonna level up a cliff probably not too many Mm. but they're just way better options and that's how this game kind of folds that you know I'd rather have to work on one bot only at a time, yeah. not three, not three or two, so that I can make one bot useful. You know, um, you could spam him all you like. You're not doing nothing. It's until you follow through with something after that that makes him desirable. And I think that's kind of where Cliff Jumper falls into this, where he's not doing a whole lot by himself. So from a solo perspective, no, not great. Not great, then, do you think? Combo? Not great. No, not great. Yeah. I kind of agree. I, I'm not too sure. I, I just I just don't rate him. He's got super low health as well. And, and I think we need, yeah. some, we need some scout cores. I really do think that. Obviously, you've seen in playtest that I've said that to Fabian that we could do with yeah. scout cores. And they said that it's a possibility. So I'm hoping that this year we might actually see some scout cores, you know, other than just G1s. Uh, but some sort of scout core as such, or some sort of combat that's geared towards scouts, I think would be interesting. Uh, and next up, Mirage. So, I love this bot in terms of lore. I think it was great in the series, yeah. and a bit of a shame. I also it's sort of like a campaign for this guy to be better, and I think that's part of the reason maybe the apes brought the G1 core out. Um, and I love his G1 core. I think his G1 core is brilliant. But I, just... I, 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 love, I love it how he goes invisible yeah, from time to time. Yeah, it should have been that from the start, think... let's be honest. Um, yeah. but I think the technology weren't available or whatever, or the tool set, whatever. So, um, so where would you place Mirage then? That's an interesting one. <sighs> probably in the line of situational and good. Yeah, because probably, yeah. I was thinking the same. It's, I, it, it's pretty hard to put any gunner outside three that come to mind which we'll talk about above good it kind of there, there's this void there's this void of kind of gunners because of what they can do versus what we need them to do from that class and we you know we need them to do a big damage with the little with the little health that they have and if they're not doing that they don't make the shuttle maybe and and well, I mean, for Mirage, you know, he's not doing a whole heap of damage with his stun missiles, right? Yeah. We're trying to get trying to get that stun. So it's like kind of like a bumblebee where we're stunning we're stunning an area, um, hoping that someone can finish it off, or it buys time for the team to walk up and finish it off, kind of thing. Um, you know, that his his G his G one is what can be a little bit of a a bonus factor because going invisible, you know, he doesn't get targeted takes less damage he's going to live longer um so yeah for him he kind of that's a factor that i think if you want to one run mirage you need that g1 call simple as that yeah and then uh my namesake sunstreaker yeah i think, um, I think this is a lot <laughs> that i've never pulled this guy i've even attempted to pull this guy you think mm. having a name Sunstreak, you think, yeah, yeah, was a will want Sunstreak, definitely, and he'll, he'll go to the ends yeah. of the earth to pull this guy. But I don't. I really don't. It's a shame, really. You know, but mm. I think... I, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy because we, we, we talk about what the lore versus what the game is. Yeah. It's not that... But we don't have that correlation connection of, hey, I recognise this character. He must be good in the game. Yeah, hey, just he falls short. Yeah. Right now, um, quite a while ago, I remember a funny bug that happened with Sunstreaker, and it was his his flames turned purple and were doing double the damage, right. and and that was kind of you know overpowered. I get it, but it's like, does he need such a boost like that with 
a small area of effect for his flames to be relevant because he's not doing, you know, he's doing the kind of the same damage as, you know, the, what, a, a maxed out Mirage or something like, I don't know, 4K or I'd have to look it up. But it's not one shot type of stuff that no. Sunstreaker is doing. For the cost. You know, it's a comp. No, yeah, for the cost, right? And I do wonder if they, in hindsight, wanted you to pair Mirage with Sunstreaker and then have that effect to clear AoE areas. And then as another combo, say Prowl and Alpha, one-shotting things, and then Jazz kind of being that over-the-top AoE clearing. That's expensive, and, though. That's really expensive. Oh, oh, I know, I know. <laughs> but just in terms of, like, how how do you make him relevant? How do you make him get a shuttle pass? Uh, next up, Hound. I think I know where you're going to put this guy. <laughs> I'm, you know, borderline... No, 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 just, just straight good. Really? Straight good. I thought because, you put him godly, to yeah. fair. I'd have put him good. I, 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 I like it. Is. I was, <laughs> when I was doing my cleanup videos, I was surprised at his range because my hound is around 55, 8, I think. I was doing my cleanup video. This is when it was all around level 60 bots that I was using. Um, and hound was around that level. And I thought, I'll just try him. And on a time trap, when I was on the bottom section of the time trap, he could reach the yeah. top section of the time trap. Yeah. His range is incredible for a gunner, absolutely incredible. Absolutely. And then when I heard you absolutely. saying that how much you using with ability, when I use when I saw ability eleven, I was like, wow, this guy's amazing. His G one core, meh, pretty rubbish to be honest with you. But his ability eleven's amazing. And when I heard you saying that, oh, I've been using him, I was like, I'm not surprised. I'm really not. Yeah. So I, I, I'm looking at mine right now. So mine's sixty four eleven with a twenty G metal, right? Now. The G metal for aspect, right? So generally, uh, G1 cores that are given to gunners, uh, they're the equivalent of a max G metal volatile mixture. Yeah. So that 15.5, right? With another extra. Now, yeah. Well, yeah, right? Now, the hound core, it's 19.3%. I, I know it sounds trivial, but it's, it's, it's extra, right? Anytime you go on extra... It's better for you. Yeah. Um, that that decoy has thirty percent of your health now. You know, health is a constant thing with gunners, but thirty percent. You know, we're looking. I don't know, two and a half thousand hologram that constantly pops. You know, you're not casting that. You're just getting that as a passive effect. Can be quite handy. Um, but the bigger draw card is that those SA from Hound doing double damage to resource buildings like i'm you know eight and a half thousand damage from one of the holograms and he has five of them yeah right so you know you can you could cast that ability up to three times you're going to clear a lot from a, a very far away range and that's super useful right because anytime you can clear stuff from a far away distance means that when you clear that stuff in front of you, it's it's easier as you go on into the into the map. But you kind of you can kind of get ahead of the game with Hound. You know, you can pick off some stuff. Um, yeah, I love him. I think you know uh, what I think is godly is maybe just because of how I can clear him. Like I'm using him with air raid. Right? Yeah. I'm doing some crazy crazy combos, and that's what I keep sharing to um, my air raid group is that this pairing is amazing right like you no longer have to look up uh so you no longer have to target those soft targets of billbot research lab or a mine or you can target a resource building that has 6500 health with hound yeah and yeah. and that's that's a game changer because that's what really capped me from uh from using the air raid and silverbot combo was because Resource buildings were just too high health. Enter Hound, pff, game changed. Well, this is about surprise you, but my vote for the uh, VIP five star was Hound. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, it was. There you go. And uh, I still stand by that. And everyone was voting Red Alert, and I was in the side chat going, mm. 
you don't want red alert. I knew what was coming. I couldn't tell uh, them, uh, but I was like, you don't want red alert. Vote for Hound. Uh, they were all like, no, I use red alert. Yeah, he's a brilliant. I was like, no, you don't want red alert. You really don't want red alert. You want Hound? They're like, nope. And I think Hound came third in that vote in the end. And it was. was like, it got pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, I was just really disappointed. And then obviously, as soon as the FFDs come out, everyone was like, well, what's the point in getting red alert now? I was like, well, I did kind of try and tell you that, but yeah. you won't listen, so. Uh, next, we've got smoke screen. So I was quite disappointed when I pulled this guy's a five star. It wasn't the pick of the batch. But um, the more I use him, the more I like him. And he's devastating against combiners. Devastating. Yeah. It's, it's not just that. It's He's the only bot that has that no cost increase, right? Yeah. It's, it's a pretty unique thing, which is like, Imagine if no bot had any ability increase. It would be crazy the spamming we'd do. But um, I do. it's a cleanup. I use him in zone 14 uh, to solo. Oh, yeah. Now, it is situational. I'm not going wrong. But when you've got the uh, these sort of bases that are maybe like a V-shape, like that, the base where they've got yeah. the point there and they get that. So what I try to do is I will literally clear the middle section out and just path him up. Then all I will do is focus on taking out the beam lasers, the launchers, the mortars. Yeah. Because nothing else reaches him. Simple as that. So I would just do... Usually it's two shots in zone 14 to take out anything. So two shots in the mortars, two shots in the launchers. And don't forget, you're doing using six points and getting one back. So it's only five points per defense. Yep. So you start off with 35 points. You've already taken out seven defenses before you even start. And you've only got yep. three launchers, three beams, four. Yep. You've already got ten defenses that can reach you. The only... The bit you got to be careful of is the outpost bots. Now, if you can get yes. past them outpost bots without hitting you, you take them out anyway for three ability points and they're gone in zone 14. It's just what bots you're going to come up against. If you come up against a high damage bot like Slash, say, he's dead. He's, he's gone. Yeah, that he's is dead. it. And that's where the health comes into it. So it's a very much situational. It all depends. So I tend to take him into zone 14. I'll try and solo. And then if he dies, I'll drop a different bot because it depends on the outpost bots that you can't scout. But he's, I think he's got a lot of good features in terms of he can solo zone 14. Amazing against combiners. It is that health. I, I do agree with that. That's the only so, thing that makes me struggle a I bit. I think he's the weakest. I think he's the weakest out of every single yeah. gunner. But has a very high return. And yeah. I said, when you, when you, any bot that we always, that I always say the checklist, you know, what's he good for? Good for war on attack, defense, uh, leveling purposes. And a good cleanup, yeah. and obviously, you know, the, the the lack of ability increase in cost. Seriously, checking all the boxes, yeah. right? And so, I know I've been tempted to get him, but just for defense because I've got enough attacking options. But you know, when you come across him on defense, he is a high priority target yeah. to remove because he does not have to move. His range is crazy. Yeah. And your bots will be so occupied elsewhere, and all of a sudden, you can bots dropping left and right like, oh, damn it! And it's like, so I, I'm using silver bot on him, or you know something, because not just you know, he just you can't ignore him on defense, and that's that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Like we're, we're we're trying to make bots that have to be prioritized, and yeah. Well, I was going to say that he's the only bot in an outpost. I will use abilities to take out the only one. I'll use abilities to take to pop certain outposts with most bots, fair enough. But once he's popped, after that, he's the only bot that I will use an ability where I've got to take him out. And the same thing, I'll use Jetfire just to take him out. Or mm. you can drop Omega Supreme because it's such low health and such high damage. Omega Supreme reflects one shot. Back. Yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> yeah. much. I use that as well. So if I see Smoke Screen in an outpost, Omega Supreme is combiner, it saves me some ability points. But other than that, got to take him out. I remember like a good few months ago now, I lost in a war. And I sat there thinking like, why have I lost? How how did my team yeah. just die so quickly? And I went looked at the replay and literally was just smoke machine going pew, <laughs> pew. Yep. Constantly like taking bots out and they're just dropping like flies. I was like, wow. And I put my outpost after seeing that. I was like, he's going in my outpost. I think that's when sort of people started getting onto the bandwagon of putting him in the outpost, realising... Uh, yeah, absolutely crazy. And uh, so, where would you put him then? Uh, um, borderline godly. Wow, I was gonna say good at least, but yeah, I think he's actually amazing. His health. I mean, I mean, look, look I mean, when you tell, 
when when we're both saying that, you know, we've we've had those times in war where we're like, I've just lost for no reason that I, I'm aware of, because you're not, the the focus is so far away from where your eyes are, and it's like, I've just lost for this one bot. That's crazy. Yeah. And he's not overpowered. He's not overpowered at all, right? Because no, he's very it's a counter. That's how it should be. Yeah, it's counter. It's a counter, right? And you know, you can take him out pretty easily, yeah. but but you have to be uh, efficient or quickly at doing it. Otherwise, yeah, bad things happen fast. So, yeah. So Warpath. So I'm not a big Warpath user. Never have been. I've got the four star around mid fifties. I know a lot of people did. Uh, HQ sixteen, HQ early seventeen. So, um, do you use Warpath quite a bit? Is he in your war team at all, or? Um, so he used to be, um, prior to Sea Spray. Um, so it was when I was really running that whole uh, air raid kind of situation. I used Warpath along with that as a good combo. Hopefully, you know, pick up a cheap target along the Warpath line, and that's where I kind of really started to understand pathing that warpath gave me this channel of like okay i now have a left and right of his shot if i keep my bots to either side of that they're just gonna walk up one of them it's like that's pretty cool right it's like okay so so my four look at my four star 61 8 it's doing two and a half thousand damage right obviously not a one-shot bot you're using it Three times. Generally, the, generally on a four star, you're using three shots. On a five star, you get that luxury of two shots because it's differently. So I look at my five star, who is maxed. So we look at a 65-10 warpath, and we're doing three and a half thousand per shot. So that's an extra thousand damage, right? So you know, moving away from three shots to only two, I'm saving costs clearing that same path and allowing my bots to be placed on left or right of that line i just i think it's great you know we our bases are symmetrical people don't like to have soft spots so everything's mirrored yeah so you just you you take out literally one half of a base with warpath and and walk up the left and away you go um so big advocate for it still still a currently used bot uh, still highly useful in Prime League hard mode. Um, yeah, I just, you know, the, I'm looking at stats. Uh, 620 DPS from Warpath as a five-star 65. That's pretty pretty good. I mean, you know, just under 16,000 health. Now, I like to protect my gunners as, as best as possible by using either Glitch or Top Heavy as a combat because, you know, you're using them for pathing purposes but you'd like to keep their DPS as a factor in your walk or cleanup, right? So yeah. let's not let them just die. Let's let them be useful post doing their job. Um, and that's how top heavy and glitch can really keep a lot of your gunners alive because they will not be at the front lines. You know, I know a lot of people like to use the whole flak or top shot, even sometimes trench, but I just, you're getting too close. You're getting too close to the action for not great health. Um, but that's so where would you yeah, put Warpath? Where would you put him? Good. Good. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. He's, not, he, he, he's not godly. He's not. Yeah. And he's not situational. I think he would have been godly a year ago. But, um, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I, sorry, well, to, to, to touch on that, because so when we started to bring build bots in and they started to either have the healing effect, that really screwed up Warpath because the the amount of time it took you to do two shots or that third shot, you had one pulse from a healing yeah. build bot and it just it wrecked you. And obviously there wasn't build bots everywhere in the spots, but they're the little things that come with running a Warpath now that you have to take into consideration of the build bots that we have now. What are, what are they protecting? You know, people who run those G metal healing cores, that's a lot of healing they can do. So you really have to be careful using Warpath to keep that in mind. Um, either take it out first, if if possible, and then you can shoot away. So that's just little key tips. 
Can you see Warpath coming back into the meta though, considering less people are using the healing build box now? Now we've got the FFD and we've got the anti hack mines, uh, anti hack cores. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, we've we've talked about you know the people who were not happy about anti hack cores coming in and saying, oh, blades and perceptor are useless. Like, yeah, but you know you, know you remove that and they they're the same bot. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, uh, that's just, uh, I think Warpath definitely can make a huge comeback with people putting more emphasis around FFD's anti-hack build bots, so there's less healing. I think you'll always find maybe one healing build bot, and that'll be near the HQ, you know, yeah. because I think the the right now the meta is big, big on defense, so we're going to heal the HQ, we've got a shield generator, we're going to have an adaptive HQ core on the HQ. That's myself. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's what I have, you know. But, but with Warpath, you're not, you're not shooting directly at the HQ, right? So we're not, we're not worried about that. Uh, and uh, next up is Six Gun. So I was impressed with this guy <laughs> in testing. I'm not going to lie. Like, he was one, one of the first bots that I thought would turn a corner with him and Chromia. And then it went a bit downhill mm. from there. Let's be honest. It it did. I, I think the the damage that he can do is pretty like it is a lot, right? Yeah. Like he can do a lot. It's like you know hits multiple targets. Um, you know, kind of hits him in a wave, like a, that original shot, and then like a follow up shot. But uh, I think his problem is also a bit like Dinobot, where it was he was so slow. Yeah. He always just sat behind, and Passive. it's like okay massively right and i wonder if we can get the the apes to kind of give six gun the the dinobot speed up yeah you know I because so, yeah. it's, i i don't think it's i i don't think it's gonna make him overpowered but it's just you know i so said we're trying to avoid splits and when bots hang back or are super slow you create that natural split even if they're all you know yeah. going in the same direction the speed of your bots plays in the big factor of, you know, who's doing what. So, um, outside his speed, I think he's decent. Um, I wouldn't put him in a prime league team, but I think he's cyber worthy. Good. I feel situational good. Yeah, good. I'm gonna put him in good. Yeah. I think he, he has. Yeah, he's yeah, definitely good. Yeah. Uh, and Alpha Bravo. So I'd presume same as Pro. Very similar. Yeah, exactly. I feel like they're brothers. I said yeah. I think there's just pairings of of gunners. Um, you know, Prowl and Bravo, and then Sunstreaker and Mirage. They're just both of them are yeah on the same wavelength of what they do, the costs and their stats. Yeah, his ability eleven was impressive recently. I'm not gonna lie with the extended range. I don't think it's enough though to no. make him amazing I... as a five star. Maybe. Um, mm. but not as a four star I just don't think that the damage should yeah. be primed the thing is right further. it's his his ability he's in the air to give his ability right ah, yeah. and I forgot to, I, I forgot to mention this on I think our, one of the, on our first stream that when oh, oh that's right when I was comparing Perceptor to Blades right I said what's the difference they're both kind of hacking an area right whether it's two things or an area now the difference with both that Perceptor and Blades and a Prowl and a Bravo, when you isolate the the bot that's in the air, you're very, very vulnerable to air defenses, yeah, right? They because they're, they're, right? They're, they're just targeting air. And we know how powerful uh, a G-Metal anti-air core is, massive range, right? Like it takes out Silver Bolt, it takes out Jetfire after two runs, you know? It doesn't take long to take blades out of the air. And I think that's a factor when you have to think about either blades or bravo, that your your special is in the air. You're taking that group safety, safety in numbers factor away. Uh, next up is Jazz. I've never been a big fan of Jazz personally. I am in law. I'm one of my favorite bots in law. But no big fan of the game. Just found him really expensive in general. Uh, definitely exp uh, probably the first expensive bot. That I came across, and then followed by Saber, right? Nine but nine ability points. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. But it can obviously, if bases are not 
spread out enough. Like I've got this uh, this graphic in my training chat as it's how to make a, a layout jazz proof, and it's like it shows you the spacing of like you need four squares between a building. Yeah, that was like law right? years ago. Back in like the HD14 yeah. days, that was law. Mm. You have to make it spaced out enough so jazz can't too short. That was the law on base design back in the yeah. day. Right? So it was like, don't make it rush. Don't make it jazz worthy. And you should be okay. Right? So um, now it's a lot harder, but also jazz isn't doing as much yeah. impactful damage to because our building is just so high health yeah. um you know i wouldn't even i wouldn't even bother pairing it with a like a, a hot rod or, or sorry a, a rodimus or a inferno it would just be way too expensive and you know i i know there's like the original walking crew when we were talking about the the, the three and two so we're talking prime and hotspot and your three gunners and it was like really it was you know, pick your Bravo Prowl or yeah. an AOE Gunner yeah. plus a Jazz just to really clear a big area. But you wouldn't you wouldn't be using Jazz like four or five times. You yeah. you know you might get off two times yeah. because it's just after that, come man. Like I'm not using 15 or 17 ability points for a maybe return. You know that like you can use your points way better. So I think he's grew out of the meta for me just due to points. Situational? Um, yeah, situational for me, for Jazz, because a, a base needs to be clumped badly. Dust up. Do we just literally move her into there? Yeah, don't move that too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a short, yeah, it's, it's, short it's, ride. It's, it's not just that. Like in the, in the last event we just had for that million point one where like we've got the G1 cores, when people are pulling like a dust up G1, they're like, I don't know what to say. I just, <laughs> I, I, I didn't get a core. <laughs> That's yeah. what it was like because, yeah. yeah I, I'd love to see dust up do some sort of clean up. You know, she's what small screen sort of does. I'd love to see her sort of do that sort of clean up job, but no, never. Would you, you know, we, we spoke about smokescreen in the non-adding uh, up of SA. If you put dust up and it stayed as, as a plus three for the entire fight. That's, I don't think that's enough even then. Even that no, would be enough, I, I think. No. That's that bad. I mean, we talked about yeah. how nose con was that poor. I mean, cliff jumpers there, I'd even put dust up down there. I really yep. would that poor. Uh, and I've said for quite a while that likes of power glide, dust up, nose cone, a box that I'm in desperate need of book. Desperate need. But, uh, yeah. No, it's not great. And then onto Sea Spray. And I think mm. we could both agree we we'll just put that right up there. Yep, I don't think it even needs to be told why. <laughs> yeah. Great. I think one of the best spots in the game, if not the best spot in the game right now. Uh, absolutely unbelievable. And I, I, I am ashamed to say that when Fabian brought this as a five-star out, I said, this guy needs a buff. But I even trying it. I was like, this guy needs a buff. I know he does. I've got the four star. And he went, sorry, we're not going to improve it. And I was quite disappointed. Then I went into the game, tried it out. And I came back in the chat. I went, yep, that's okay, Fabian. It's fine. Don't worry. It's good as it is. You leave it like that. Uh, and I was like, wow, this guy's unbelievable. Because I, there's a guy called uh, Nau. Do you remember him? Oh, yes. I yes, do. So yes. Nau used the likes of Sea Spray and used the likes of Hound and... He was an advocate for bots that did a lot of AOE, but people didn't really use. And after seeing his C his C spray videos, I was like, uh, his C spray replays, I was like, I'm gonna get go and get C spray, chase C spray. About two hundred crystals later, finally got the four yeah. star, leveled the four star, and it just wasn't as good as I thought it'd be. But I think this is pre volatile mixture days, even definitely pre uh, uh, pre G metals, definitely um, pre obviously pre combat and everything like that as well. So, yeah, he was okay, but he wasn't, like, amazing. And I actually, I actually thought Helm was better. And that's a good to his truth. But I think as the five-star come out, it's just emphasised how good he really is, especially with the volatile mixture and combat and everything else. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Part. It's, de it's definitely, as I said, there's um, there's some four-stars that are just primely capable. Yeah. And this is one of those bots. I mean, yes, you, you need that SA-11, Hey, that's that's just what it is, you know. But at the same time, uh, there's a massive difference between leveling up a four star versus a five star. And I don't know if people know 
how much of a difference it is, but it's a lot, yeah. right? Like, especially when you're grinding between 62 or the last four levels. Yeah. yeah. It's a massive, I massive it's gap. About, just off my head, I bet it's about 25, 30 mil difference. Yeah, it's, I it's, I, I think it's even a little bit more, to yeah. be honest, but, um, yeah, I just there's nothing to be disappointed about investing in a four star C spray. Um, most people have him, so the people who are like, "Oh, I don't have the five star," well, hey, you don't have to. Just use your four star. Uh, and then uh, one of the latest bots to come to the game is a uh, Rotor Storm. So I've recently got this guy and started leveling him, which is rare for me to level a four star. Um, I was quite impressed in testing. I thought it did a lot of damage. I was actually surprised how much damage it did. And people were quoting him saying he's a, a sentius in the air. Like, I think he's the bot yep. strafe. Could have been, really. Um, so, yeah, what's your take on uh, Rotostarm? Yeah, I, I think I put it straight down to an aerial sentius that mm. was just amazing. Obviously, we're not getting um, we're not getting that 50% less damage like sentius. But I think there's more range. I think there's more range to Rota. You know, after you destroy something, you're getting that bonus effect yeah. on top of it, right? So, you know, up to a maximum 370 or not, yeah, 370 percent extra damage. Like that's kind of huge. So it becomes a massive chain reaction, and and that's what you want. But obviously, just that slight weakness of he's isolating himself from the group and vulnerable to AA. So you know, maybe your first target is a turret to remove that threat. And then it's like, well, nothing's going to really hit it. You do have um, the plasma MDSs, which have massive range, and now people are using them because we have a, the sharks buff associated with that. But um, no, overall, I think he's a really solid um, bot, and I definitely put him in the good good category because yeah, he's just idea. solid all around. Well, I was using him slightly uh, differently. I mean, when I first started using him, I think I was anyway. When people started using him, um, you set a target. And I came, you might remember, I came in the playtest chat and I said that the bonus is alright, but the problem is, is that it takes so long to destroy a target that with his, yep. with his ability, because it's such such high HP, you're probably only destroying two targets, you're not getting much of a bonus. So what I no. did then was, I put an AoE butt out first to weaken the defences, and then I used them as a clean up, and then wow. Then he yep. went into overdrive. So I think that if you use him as a cleanup bot, the damage he does is crazy compared to Sentius. If you're looking for him to clear a section to path first, I'd probably rather use Sentius for the HP that you're gonna get yep. after it and all that. It doesn't give that much more benefit and it's a gunner, so I get no. it's a bit varied. Um but yeah, if you're gonna use like I said to you about cost, reducing costs, if you're gonna use Rook say in an area and you wanna use Rotostorm afterwards, then the damage you're gonna do after that is absolutely crazy. So um yeah. Well uh yeah, so that's all the gunners in the game. Rated quite a small class, to be honest, compared to the uh, other classes we've done. But um mm. yeah, i uh like I said, this was requested quite a bit, so I'm glad we covered Gunners. And again, big thanks to Tex for uh, giving us his time, uh, giving his opinions and coming on the channel. Uh, but again, as always, guys, if you disagree with our, uh, our decisions, then put it in the chat. Uh, put it in the comments and let me know what you think. Are there any bots in there that you think should be higher? Any bots in there you think should be lower? Is a bot that you use in Wars? And think you stand by and go, listen, I use this guy. He's amazing. This is how I use him. Let us know how you use him. And can have a look at it. All right, well, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Really appreciate it. Don't forget, there's some more of this series to come. And the only way that you can check this series out is by subscribing to the channel, guys. If you subscribe, you get notifications on every single video that I do. And then you'll never miss another one of these series ever again with me and Tex. Awesome. Thanks, Waza. Thank you again, bud. And uh, catch you later, guys. And peace out.